right now yeah okay awesome now you can see the question i'm going to get started again i'm really sorry about this so this is the question that we are doing okay so this is the 2d matrix that is given to us we are starting from here so this is the source we are over here and this is the destination okay so our rat is starting from here and it has to reach the end in this particular example n is given as 4 so this is the matrix that is given to us and this is the n value that is given to us uh, i hope you are able to see right okay great so here now uh, the rat can move up left down right like that uh, these are the possible combinations that are possible so basically if we start from here we can go right and down from here we can go up left down right like that but obviously in the question it is given if it is zero we can't go over there if it is one only then we can go over there okay so it seems like a very simple question uh, but we have to apply recursion over here let me know in the comments how many of you can actually think of a recursive solution yourself we have done similar questions but this can be a bit tricky uh, so basically we are going to go through all the possible solutions and uh, we have to come up with all the possible answers okay so here you can see that uh, let's look at the answers so here the first one was down down r down r r so down down r down r r so that is how we reach over here right so now let us first start thinking of the solution and then we will start coding uh, so in the question we are given the matrix and we are given n now it is given very clearly that no cell can be visited more than one time it means that we can't go like left right left right left right left right so we don't have to deal with those things we can't also go like we will go to a square and then come back we can't do that okay we can't like go this 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 come back and then do go again no cell can be visited again that is one very good question so if you're in if so if you're in an interview you have to think of such edge cases and ask your interview can we come back to the cell otherwise you know there will be so many possibilities because you can get stuck in a square loop also if you can come back in a, a square right or can you go like left right left right are those also possible solutions or not okay and uh, see here it is given that if you can't find a solution then you have to return minus one when can we not find a solution say if the source itself is uh, zero or the destination itself is zero or there is no path consisting one ones then okay then obviously you can't reach so these are the cases that you have to think of now let me zoom out so that you can see the question as well give me one second I hope you are able to see the code also now, right? Okay, great. Uh, let's just start writing the code. Uh, let me know if you're able to see it. If not, see there's a delay of one or two minutes. That's the thing about teaching on YouTube. Uh, but bear with me. Okay, so now what we are going to do, we are going to think of all the possible solutions. So you can see that we have to return a vector of string. So when we have to return a vector of string, because see here, they were like two strings, we return vector of strings. So first thing, okay, we have to come up with vector of string. So let's call it res, okay. Then we'll also be dealing with current string at a particular time. So let's call it current. I can see that you still can't see the code properly. I am going to sort this out guys. Give me one second. I hope you should be able to see now. Yep. Okay. So we have a vector of strings, which is RES, um, vector and a vector of vector of integer right and I have to pass in uh, I am passing the row that I am at and the column that I am at okay, I'm not sure if you can see till there so I'm going to come to the next row okay so now what we are going to do is code editor is half visible why And now I'm really hoping you can see it. Okay. You 
you should be able to see the full screen now guys i'm so sorry uh, i have there is delay of 2 minutes so yep okay yeah now you can see right now i can see that you can see it so this is the uh, resultant that we are passing this is the current value this is the matrix that we have passed this is n and this is the row and column that we are at okay so now let's start thinking of all the conditions what will be the first condition that was given to us that if the value is zero then that means that the rat should not be able to come over there so if it is zero then we should just return from there we should not do anything now again there are various ways of writing the code and we'll be discussing all of that so if we are at row and column and if the value over here is zero so how can we check that if the value is zero if the value is not there then what do we do we just return from there we don't do anything so that is the first condition that if the, the value there is zero that means we can't do anything we, have, we just have to return okay otherwise what is the next condition when do we stop a recursion see we always have to think okay what will be the end condition right when will our recursion stop in this case when are we reaching our destination when the row and the column value becomes what n minus 1 n minus 1 right so we have to add those checks also so how do we put that check that if r is equal to n minus 1 and c is also equal to n minus 1 so if we are at that row and column what are we going to do we are going to add the current one that we have so res dot pushback current so i am adding the current string that we are dealing with in our vector and then i am returning from here okay now the uh, next question that you should be thinking of should we return from here or not okay uh, is there anything else that we need to do and i wanted to think about this uh, when we write the rest of the code you should think that was it wise that okay we return from there or should we be not returning from here should we be just pushing back okay now this is the only time when we have uh, going to edit our resultant array uh, resultant vector why are we doing that because now we have reached our end this is where we can actually push our current to the resultant I hope you have understood this much. If there is any question till now, you can keep asking me. I'm looking at the questions. Okay, so don't worry at all. So these are the two cases. One is when the blow, when the element that we're dealing with is zero, then we just return from there. One is when we have gotten our answer. If that is not the case, what do we have to do? We have to navigate through the matrix. Now, what are the four navigations that are possible? Up, down, left, and right. So let's write the code for that. So if suppose we have to go right. So when we go right, basically what are we going to do? We are going to go towards right. So we are going to increase our column. So when we increase our column, we have to do what? We have to put our check that number of columns should be less than n minus 1 because maximum value of column is what? n minus 1. If that is the case, what do I do? I just call helper a gap because I'm writing recursion. So res current and uh, m n r c so now you will say i passed the exact same thing right what change am i making over here see now in current how is my current going to change i am going one column up right one column up means what i am going towards right direction so i am going to add r over here okay and i am going to increase my column value see now we have put check over here only if column is less than n minus 1 only then i'm calling so here i don't have to put check that okay oh if my row is greater than equal to 0 if my r is less than n minus 1 if my c is greater than equal to 0 if my c is less than n minus 1 i am not calling the function if the value is out of bound so that is one way of writing code another way of writing code would have been that i don't put check over here and i add a check over here that you know if rho is greater than or equal to 0 and r is less than n minus 1 only then you go ahead otherwise you don't go ahead now another thing that over here also i am putting a check over here instead of putting a check in the starting i could have put a check over here that you know if the value at r in c minus 1 is 0 then you don't call the function again it is just ways of writing the code and you should be able to think of all of these cases yourself that you know i'm going to put this check at the starting or over here these are like it just depends on you what you find easier i found i personally find it easier that i can just put a check increasing the number of calls that i'm making because be greater than zero okay here i am going what okay now here there is a problem let me try compiling it and see whether it is going to work or not and then let's see okay so after doing uh, the four navigations what am i going to do is there anything else that i need to do over here i don't think so here i can just return res over here okay i need you to tell me in the comments that okay what mistake i'm making you have to think of it come on i'm compiling this 
okay there's a compilation error also rnc mnrc is not declared okay so the initial values of rc that i am passing should be what it should be zero zero now let's compile and see Okay, so there's a segmentation fault. Why is there a segmentation fault? In the starting, we had discussed a case that no cell can be visited more than one time. We had also talked about a case when I get stuck, suppose these four values were one, 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 one. So what will happen? I'll get stuck in a square. I'll just keep moving like this, 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 right? So obviously I'll lead to a segmentation fault. So for dealing with that, what do we do? No cell can be visited one more time. So we have to track that in one recursive call, we have to mark them visited. Exactly, Shivai said we haven't marked mark them visited. Very good, Shivai. Uh, I need you to keep telling me like this, okay? So I'm going to again make it N by N and I'm marking initially everything as spots. And I need to pass this visited over here after current I am passing, okay? So let me just pass this in all the calls that we have made after current, right? So over here, and again, since we take so that you can understand that, okay, if we don't do this, what is going to happen? Okay. Now the question is, when do we mark a node as visited and when do we mark it as not visited? Let me mark the node visited over here when we get into the recursion. So I'm going to go like in this matrix for this row and this column, I am going to, the matrix that I'm dealing with is what visited. So I'm going to mark it as true. Now also I have to mark it as false when I go back. Now I need one of you to tell me in the comments that why do we need to mark it as false when we are going back, okay? So let me compile this and see. It's a bit slow, let's see. Uh, let us talk about why there is still segmentation fault. Why is that happening guys? You have to tell me in the comments why is the segmentation fault happening? MNRC if there is no value. Okay. Also we have to check also now that it is not visited. So here I am checking that if it is not zero and if it is not visited. Okay. So or if it is visited basically. If it is already visited then we don't have to do anything. We have to return from there itself. Okay, I need you to tell me in the comments that why are we marking it false in while coming back. Okay, here output is correct. Now let's try submitting it and see. So we are passing, we have passed all the test cases. Okay, so now let's talk about why we had to mark it as false while going back. See, once we have marked it true in that recursive call. So suppose this is one branch that we are going to. Okay. In this branch, we have to mark it true, true, true. But when we are going back, if this is already marked true, I will miss this branch, right? So I have to make sure that when I go back for the next branch, I have to mark them as visited false again. So when I'm restarting it, we have to again and again mark them as true. Very good, Shivai. He has told that because we want to get every possible path. Okay, now let's discuss the time and the space complexity. Here it is given to us that the auxiliary space should be order of l into x where l is the length of the path and x is the number of uh, paths is this actually happening or not first extra uh, uh, first extra space that we are taking is this visited array which is actually what it is uh, n by n right other than that what is the recursive call that we are making see every branch can be how long it can be length of path right and how many number of paths it is x so that is the number of recursive calls also plus also other than the recursive calls that is what we are storing in this vector right so that also we are storing expected time complexity so every time uh, we have to go like uh, in three directions right we can't go in all the four directions because it will be coming from one so three directions and n square possibilities and all of them so or three par n square if you have any doubts let me know so this was the question for today uh, also, I wanted to tell me whether this was a better thing, uh, doing it live or recording and editing and then putting up, which saves more of your time. I know today uh, the screen size and all was a bit of trouble, but since it was the first time from tomorrow, it will obviously much faster and I'll be able to teach much faster. So let me know what you prefer. We can do both. I hope you had a good time. I hope you liked the 
uh, question and if you have any doubts again i am there see you tomorrow